Good day, my name is Luca Bezzi and I'm working for ARTIM, a private society which operates in the field of archaeology. Today I'm here to present the town project, which is an open research pilot project. Before to start, just a few words about the concept of open research. We consider an open research any kind of research process which involves open tools, software and hardware, which share the necessary knowledge and of course the data. These three elements, tools, knowledge and data, are like three links of a chain. When a complete and free access is granted to every single ring of this chain, we have of course some benefits, we will see them later. On the contrary, when the access to one of these elements is somehow blocked, we have some consequences. For example, in most cases, when we use closed tools like the software, we reduce the control during cognitive processes. And if we do not share the knowledge related with our research, of course we reduce its scientific potential. Finally, if we do not share the data, we reduce the theory's validability. Analyzing the town project, we will see how using open tools, sharing the knowledge and keeping a free access to the data, the results evolved faster than in other conditions. But before to do this, I would like to show you the premises of the project, going back in time till 2009. As you see, I tried to summarize the evolution of the town project in a phylogenetic tree, splitting the diagram in three parts. Open data, where I divided between raw data and processed data. Open tools, where I differentiate between testing and developing the tools. And open knowledge, divided between scientific dissemination and didactic activities. So let's start from 2009, when our team was invited to participate to the Topoi project, an excellent cluster sponsored by the German government. In that occasion, we had the possibility to test two open source software we knew, but we had no time to evaluate in previous projects, Bandler and PM West 2. As you can see, we reached good results in 3D documentation, so that we decided to go on with new experiments. And soon, we just find Python Photogrammetry Toolbox, a series of Python scripts written by the French researcher Pierre Molon, which simplified the use of Bandler and PM West 2, through just some terminal commands, before the process was longer and complicated. But as you can see, the software was still running with command line tools, so that many archaeologists were scared by this difficulty. For this reason, we decided to develop a fast and simple interface. We call it PPT GUI. And the interface was useful to help new buyers in using such a sophisticated tool. After some new tests, we decided to integrate PPT and PPT GUI into ArcOS, the free GNU Linux system developed for archaeological aims, which ArcTeam releases under GPL license. In this way, archaeologists could count on a complete system which could be used out of the box. Having this new tool for everyday 3D documentation on the field, we wanted to test it also for laboratory operation. The idea was to force the software to work also with a fixed camera moving the object to document on a turntable. We were just curious to know if we would have been able to trick the software, so we erased any possible reference for the background using a simple blackboard. Strangely, the experiment worked, and we got a good dataset, composed by an accurate 3D point cloud of a human skull coming from one of our excavations. So we decided to share through internet also this raw dataset. And this was a good idea, because from this fact started a series of interesting studies we did not consider at the beginning. In fact, the 3D artist Cicero Moraes from Brazil used this data to try a 3D facial reconstruction, turning the normal forensic methodology, especially Wilkinson et al., into a digital technique based on Blender. This kind of study went on with the test of new software, and especially in Vesalius, a Brazilian open source program to handle DECOM data. The software, in fact, was very useful in many studies of ancient mummies. Finally, we had the idea which gave birth to the town project. We wanted to try a partial reconstruction of our minute, and we chose the town child thanks to the collaboration of Dr. Nicola Carrara of the Padua University Anthropological Museum, who kindly made available the cast of the skull. As you can see, the project had a positive end, reaching the main goal. 
and also in this case we share through internet all the data the raw data that are the original photo set and the 3d point cloud of the scale and the processors data which is the final blender model of course the town project was not the end of our research in the field of forensic facial reconstruction the studies went on with the improvement of the methodology as you can see in this animation which shows the whole process Actually, with the help of the Italian society Ken Strapper and of Leonardo Zampi, we are testing the 3D rapid prototyping technique using the Open Harbor machine RipRap. Currently, we just solved the printing problems of the town scale model so that we can now print a copy. To share the knowledge related with the town project, we use different channels. First of all, the blog Ator, Arc Team Open Research where we are trying to share our research in archaeological field almost in real time. Then in Blender Nation, where some posts refer to the town project. But the town project did not stop with the town child. After the positive experience we went on reconstructing other hominids and the relative images were shared with the community through Wikipedia. Here is an example of the Russian page of the Turkana boy. As you can see, the image is taken from Cicero reconstruction. Of course, once the model were using such an important project like Wikipedia, the data dissemination has increased exponentially. Many media in fact refer to Wikipedia. As an example, here is an article of the Huffington Post regarding the Turkana boy. And again, as you can see, we find Cicero's model. Finally, having reconstructed a good number of units, a new experiment started, an open source exhibition regarding the human evolution. The exposition, called the Thesis of the Evolution, took place in Brazil, in the city of Curitiba. The meaning of an open source exhibition is that everything that has been created to set up the exposition, 3D models, posters and so on, has been released with an open license. Currently, we are trying to use part of this material in Italy for another open source exposure. The new exhibition is called Facce, Evolti dell'Evoluzione Umana. Currently, it is still a work in progress, so I cannot say very much about it, but I can anticipate that it will be based on scientific installation with a large use of augmented reality application. Now that we saw the evolution of the town project, let's see more in detail the benefit of this open research. The main short-term benefits regard the partner who participate in the project. In fact, during the whole study, it was spontaneously created a net of subjects interested in the general topic or in single part of the research. This net has been a concrete benefit for most of the partners, also for the professional life. As an example, I will show you very fast the evolution of our team net of partners starting from 2008. As I said, in 2009 we participated in the Topoi project. And in 2010 we shared our results during the Archeophos workshop in Foggia. So we started to collaborate with other partners interested in the research. Like Pierre Nolan from Université Paris-Est. And from Micros Image. Again, in 2012, we shared our results during the CEA of Southampton. And in the meantime, our net was increasing exponentially. Until today. And the new collaboration with the Society Against Trapper, which I mentioned before. Finally, we built a net of partners. Which is a great motivation to our research. And at the same time, a great help. Currently, the entities involved directly or not in the town project are 8 universities, 7 plus community, 6 research institutes, 4 private companies, 3 scientific communities and 3 museums. They are in different parts of the world, from Armenia to Sweden. The medium term benefit of an open research regards essentially the scientific discipline. 
In the particular case of the town project, the main example is the transfer of the normal forensic methodology for the facial reconstruction to a digital technology based on Blender. This fact attracted the attention of Tom Rosendahl, the father of Blender, who report our work in a tweet. Another example is the intuition Cicero had working on the facial reconstruction of the Australopithecus afarensis. He found the decon data of a chimpanzee, Pantroglodytus, whose DNA is close to the human one for more than 98%. Then Cicero modified the skull of the primate to adapt it to the one of the Australopithecus, so that also the muscle and the skin was deformed. The result seems pretty realistic. And in this case we get the compliment of Elizabeth Dainis, the famous artist specializing in hominid reconstruction. Again, another example of scientific benefits is the reconstruction of the Homo floresiensis, better known as the Hobbit. Currently, there are just six or seven different facial reconstructions of the LB1 individual. Like Professor Peter Brown, one of the members of the keep which discovered the bones, wrote us in this mail. Finally, regarding the long-term benefits of the town project, we can say they are connected mainly with the community. In fact, since the town project started, six or seven reconstructions of hominids were done. And these 3D models started to integrate the phylogenetic tree of human evolution. From the Australopithecus afarensis to the Australopithecus africanus. From the Homo habilis till Homo edelbergensis and Homo erectus. And of course, Homo neanderthalensis and Homo sapiens and the already mentioned Homo floresiensis. Now, just a few words before concluding. If you are interested in this or in other project, you can find more information on other blog. Where the research goes on. Here is, for example, an old experiment with augmented reality in our toolkit, an open source software. As you see, the dataset is always the same. In Ator, you can also download the 3D models I mentioned during the presentation. These are just simplified 3D models, but on Ator, you will find the real Blender files. And that's all. Thank you very much for your attention and sorry for the long presentation.